Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to learn how to voice control an LED through Wi-Fi with the Wi-Fi chip. Today, we're going to be using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. I like to use this chip because of its relatively low cost. It's only about $5 on eBay or Amazon. To get started, we need this chip, a breadboard, two wires, and an LED. First, you want to plug in the ESP8266 into the breadboard. Currently, I'm using a Node MCU dev kit, and it makes my job a lot easier because I do not have to provide an FTDI or any kind of breadboard adapter. The pins were kind of bent, but it should be fine now. Next, put in the LED. I usually like to put it around here, and then we have to check which one's a long one, and which one's a short one, just as a note. The positive side, or the long side, goes into D0 of the Node MCU. The other pin goes into ground. That's pretty much it. Let's move on to the Arduino code part where we program this chip using the Arduino IDE. Let's move on to the Arduino part of our code. To get started, you want to download the code that is in the link below in the description. Click on it and you should get a file, a zip file, that says ap underscore simple underscore 12 e dot zip. Now unzip it and open up the Arduino file. First of all, you have to download the ESP8266 board library. So I'm going to open up Arduino. And there is a link down below that starts with HTTP uh, Arduino.ESP8266.com and then there's a bunch of random slashes and other things and at the end is a .json. You see, this is where you want to paste it. It should be something like this. You see, once you've pasted it into the preferences in the additional board manager URLs, click OK and restart Arduino. Then you want to go to the board manager under the boards menu and the tools menu. go down it should be at the very bottom at the time of this recording it was version 2.3.0 then click install if you haven't installed it and then wait for it to finish installing once you have finished installing it open up the file and this part the first line that where it says include ESP8266 Wi-Fi the ESP8266 Wi-Fi part should turn orange. I'll explain the code very briefly. This is a constant that defines the password of the Wi-Fi network that the ESP8266 broadcasts. This will define the Wi-Fi wi server on port 80. This is a function that sets up the Wi-Fi. It first sets a mode to Wi-Fi AP, and then it finds the MAC address, finds a soft ET MAC address, then that's a string to the MAC ID, to the address minus two, to the address plus one, and then you they set it to uppercase, and then adds it to the name string. Then it converts it to uh, characters, 
and then sets the soft AP with the SSID being the name character and the password being the password that we set up here. This part just is very simple. All it does is set the serial monitor, the pin mode, and sets the pin to low. In the setup, it begins the server and sets up the Wi-Fi and initiates the hardware. In the loop, it defines the client, which will be passing all the requests. If there is no client, then it just returns and goes on. Then it defines the request, which is the client that is read string until this line. Then you, it prints the request and then it flushes the client. Then it checks what the request is. If it's the index of LED slash zero, that means the user has requested to turn this LED off. That means that the value is zero that we set earlier. And then we digital write 16 to the value. You can see here it's the same thing, but we're turning on the LED. Down here, we're just printing some things to put if the user decides to control it from a web page, telling them that the LED is now on or off. And if there's if it's an invalid request, then it tells them what to do. Then it disconnects the client and delays again. Great. So that's how the code works. Let's move on to uploading it. To upload it, you want to attach your ESP8266 to your computer via a USB cable. Then go ahead to the tools menu and select it under the ports and then press upload. Then now we're going to move on to the iOS part of the program. See you there. Let's move on to the iOS part of this project. To get started, download the source code from the link down below through the app and then open it up. Here it is. All right. First off, I want to introduce you to what this app is. So essentially what it does is it has a view controller right here and you can see there's a title, there's a text view, and then there's a recording button. Down here is a web view. This web view will be used to execute the commands that will control the LED. And it is hidden because when you go to the attributes inspector, you see that the drawing under the drawing menu, it's hidden. Great. So that's the main storyboard. Here is the view controller code. In the view controller code, at the beginning, we have the IB outlets. Then we have the speech recognizers, then the requests, the task, and the audio engine. In the view did load, we have the microphone button, the speech recognizer, the SF speech recognizer authorization request, which will determine if the button is enabled or not. Here we have the IB action for if the microphone button is tapped. If the audio is running, if it's recording, then we're going to stop the audio and set the title back to start recording. If it's not running, then that means we have to start running and then press it, change the title to stop recording. This is a function that kind of, well, it's kind of complicated. You see, that's the very beginning. It checks if the recognition task is not nil. If it is, then it's going to cancel it and set it to nil. Then it, it creates an audio session and tries to set the category, the mode, and the active. If it can't, then it's going to print an error. Then you're going to have a recognition request and you're going to set it equal to an empty initializer. Down here, we have a bunch of guard functions. And what these do is they check if it's equal to that. If it's not, then it calls a fatal error. Down here, it actually recognizes the audio. And you can see that down here, we with this switch statement, we have a URL with the IP address of the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. And then we open it with the web view. By the way, I also have to change this to dot four dot one for both of them. 
And then here it's checking for if there's an error and it tries to start again. Finally, down here, it checks if the availability did change. If it's available, then it's enabled. If it's not available, then it's not enabled. That's pretty much all it is. Great. Let's move on by attaching your phone to the computer and make sure that your phone has cellular data. And then go ahead and upload it. You can see that I haven't updated, so I have to update before I do that. But actually, you don't have to update. You can set the deployment target and then go ahead and press upload. So it failed because, oh, because we were using WebView before 11.0, which means that we have to use a deprecated WebView. So what we have to do is we have to delete this and then put in a new one. You can do this by searching up WebView. And we're going to use a legacy. And then again, reset to suggested constraints. And go ahead and go to the go back and link it up. So that's our web view. We just directly connected to web. Let's give it a try. Great, that works. Right now I just gotta open up my phone because it was locked just moments before. And just gonna cancel running, try again. So I see it come up and it just went in. Great. So it works. Let me give it a try. All right, let's move on to the final step, which is testing it out. Now that we've finished everything, let's test it out. First, you want to have an iPhone with cellular data. We go to settings and then go to Wi-Fi. In the Wi-Fi menu, you want to select the one that starts with LED. In my case, it's LED-F28. If you can't see, I'm just going to zoom in right there. Great. The password as you remember is ESP8266-12. E. We'll press join. And we are joined uh, almost immediately. Now we open up the Siri app. You see? All I have to say is turn LED on. Just going to zoom out a little bit. And now I will say it. Turn LED on. As you can see, the LED does turn on. Now I'm going to say turn LED off. Turn LED off. As you can see, it almost immediately turns off. Overall, this project was a complete success. We learned a lot from it. We learned how to control an LED through voice, which seems like uh, an Alexa type of thing, but you can do it at home without having to buy an Alexa. Just with your phone, an ESP8266 chip, and an LED and a few wires, you can accomplish the same thing. Anyway guys, see you in the next video.